So uh, let's put this thing on the tripod and give it a good what for. There we go. Now, leaving this in here where it's very stealable, it's a lot harder to be stolen. At least they're not gonna drive it out of here, I guess. Howdy my friends and welcome to the channel today. I'm Luke, Thunderhead289, here on YouTube. And you guys haven't seen me for a while. Um, I moved, you know, I just moved like a couple years ago. And you know, if you don't move every two years, you're just wrong. I'm kidding, I really, really don't recommend moving a lot. I hope if I move again, it's in a casket because boy, moving is something else. But anyway, we have a little bit more room these days, so we can do a few more things. Now, I've been working a little bit on the carb cheater, and today I'm still kind of getting moved, so we're gonna break out some party tricks here and just, I don't know, have some fun today. We're not even gonna be serious. Let's jump in. Now, hopefully you guys can hear me okay as the wind's just whipping away outside. You know, in Iowa, we can't get a nice day to save our life here. But, uh, you know, if you follow me for a while, you remember the lawnmower carb series. You might remember the little adaptive control that made the lawnmower carb able to be ran on the Maverick here. And basically it programmatically on the fly looks at air fuel ratio and trims things so that we stay within a target air fuel ratio. There's a lot of science words there. But anyway, a lot of folks have kind of commented they'd like to have that available where they could use it. So anyway, over the winter, it's cold as heck, nothing to do. And I'm a programmer by day. And I partnered with another fellow who's real good with the web development side. And we made a pretty wicked cool app and control module with a whole bunch of extra features than we did before. So today we're just gonna go through some party tricks. Now this one I wouldn't necessarily give to the public, but I kind of like it. You ever see an old car start up on its own before from a phone? Pretty nifty. Let's jump in and take a look here. All right, so here's the basic original premise of the carb cheater. You can see it's trimming the air fuel ratio to get to our target air fuel ratio just on the fly. So it basically looks at a deviation and adjusts proportionally to get us to where we need to be. So we see we're hovering right around our 13 and a half air fuel ratio and all these adjustments and target settings are tunable. Um, there's a cruising and idle setting as well. We're on the idle setting, of course, because we're idling here. So, a few other settings you can adjust. Uh, someone suggested I should add data logging. And then we did one better, we added graphing. So I'll stop that, it's asking me to name it. We're just gonna go without a name. So we'll look at that in a second. So then someone said it'd be really nice to have a gauge display screen. So here we go, there's your gauge display. All right, going back to the graphing here. So say you wanted to look at your data. Pop in, it's auto copied. There's our data log. We're gonna hit submit. And now we actually have an adaptive graph of our data, our air fuel ratio. And you can save this and email this to yourself on a computer. It saves for 30 days. So all that's well and good, but now with Power Tour coming up, I'm gonna show you actually what my favorite feature is that we recently put in this thing. All right, we can all see that the engine's running here, right? Now we have an ignition lock that we can turn on. Yes, we wanna turn it on. Get away from the fan here so you can hear what I'm actually saying. So basically, this is on until you turn it off. If someone hops in your car, also, your app does not have to be connected for this thing to run. It runs on its own. Now, if you turn ignition lock on, 
you have to come back here and disable it to be able to start your engine. Now the benefit of this is like, you know, okay, you're on power tour. Everyone's always afraid of their cars getting stolen because it literally happens. So now you basically, your car has no ignition and you know, the average thief is pretty stupid and you gotta really know what's going on to be able to figure this out and defeat it. And I guarantee no one's gonna spend the time trying. So let's try and refire the engine and just see what this looks like. All right, we see our app still on, our engine, everything is on still here. So you can't cut the ignition, by the way, when you're driving down the road, you have to be at below your target idle RPM or your idle RPM setting. So, you know, you can't go down the road and accidentally hit it. But I wanted to do it with the engine running so you have a nice confirmation that it did indeed engage because it'll shut the engine off. So now the car's off, we're all disconnected. We're gonna close out of everything, okay? So there's no app involved at this point. So now we're gonna try and refire our engine. And it's going to immediately shut back off. Nothing, okay? So you get nothing. So now, if you wanted to drive away, and notice this doesn't happen unless you turn it on, all right? So we didn't want to have it doing that every single time. All right, we have our auto connect going on here. All right, so now we're going to turn our ignition cut off. So our ignition cut is off. And now, really high compression engine. Here we go. And it's going to be a little rich from trying to start it and cutting the ignition. There we go, we're up and running just fine. Oh, one other thing. Let's look at the rev limiter on this thing. We added one of those too, because why not? Now you might have like a complaint about why this is on a phone and not some gauges or an external display. The whole reason I made it this way is I have some nicer classic cars that I just hate putting gauges all over the place. You know, I only really want to know when I want to look at it. And other than that, I don't want to hurt the originality. Now, a lot of these old original cars, they don't have a rev limiter or anything like that. So, you know, you can valve float them to the moon and just destroy things. I didn't like that. So we, since we're already tracking RPM, we went ahead and just programmed in the ability to have a settable rev limiter. You can set it wherever you want. And so, heck, your kid taking your car set at 3000 RPM. It's not going to rev over that. So let's wrap this thing out. I think I have it set at 3,500 RPM just to show it off. So let's smack that throttle. All right, here we go. And it's an ignition cut rev limiter. So as soon as I release, it's rolling a big fireball out of the exhaust, which is pretty cool. And we actually made a feature to be able to do that, which, that's probably not legal, but I put it in there anyway. Right now it's its normal rev limiter and it's adaptive. The harder you rev the uh, throttle, the more it's gonna go with your RPMs. So it's always gonna sound the same. I didn't want one of those big fat rev limiters that, you know, cuts RPM. It's like, bam, bam, bam. You know, I like that, that chatter effect to it. And then it works a lot better under load too. So uh, let's put this thing on the tripod and give it a good what for. So all these settings are in the setup display here. You have your limiter RPM. We have some beta two-step stuff that's going pretty well. Obviously, you can put it on different engines in a V8 here. So you have cylinder count. Uh, we have that custom relay. That's kind of what I used to actually fire the engine up at the beginning of the video. Uh, you have a calibration. You can use an external AFR gauge. Uh, I basically would supply a whole setup for you. It's cheaper that way, but if you already have one, you can graph that in no problem. So you just have to tell the carb cheater here exactly what the range is, which is in all the documentation of a normal setup. So with that, 
there we go. Now, leaving this in here where it's very stealable, it's a lot harder to be stolen. At least they're not gonna drive it out of here, I guess. All right, my friends, I think that's gonna do it for our little teaser trailer here. I know I didn't show under the hood of the actual mechanism and the control and what's actually doing everything. The app has no control. It's just basically your interface telling um, the control, the target settings that you want, and then there's some other manipulations you can do as you saw there. But uh, I just don't want to be redundant. I'm going to show under the hood in future videos. Um, it's real easy to install. It's a wideband O2 sensor, uh, two vacuum lines, and then four wires, two to the battery, and then two to the coil. So, I mean, you can install this thing in like an hour and a half, two hours. I tried to make it really simple. No wires run into the cab. Real easy to do. And so, you know, I don't know. I wasn't going to do YouTube this year. I was just going to kind of quietly retire. But you all kind of pestered me that this would be a nice thing to have. So, well, here you go. Here we are. And honestly, I really just made it because I think it'll be a thing that will... The, the benefit of it is it takes all of the guesswork, which is what everyone hates about cars. It takes all of the guesswork and gets rid of it. So, you know, I don't know. It's one of those things that I wish I had when I started out and nothing like that existed. I don't want to go to fuel injection, and I don't think everyone needs to go to fuel injection. It's really expensive, and a carb can be pretty darn good. I've logged almost 50,000 miles on this car, and it's a pile of garbage. Look at it. And it, I've never been straight on the side of the road once. And, you know, that's 10 years of experience. But with this, it's like you take all the guesswork out, and it's real obvious what you need to do to get things to run right. And little anomalies, it'll account for them and adjust on its own anyway. So with that, if you got any questions, comments, um, I'm open to suggestions. A lot of the things you saw in this video was from Thunderhead 289 Carbon Engine Tech and Tune Forum. Um, suggestions you guys have made. So I appreciate those, and I think it's better for it. So if you have any further ones, you know, be my guest and comment below. But with that, I guess I'll catch you guys later. I gotta, oh, I still got so much stuff to put away. All right, here we go.